It is night. Judah's truck makes its way through the streets of what is left of Port of Spain. Inside the truck, Io drives as Celeste sits slumped in the front seat, drifting in and out of consciousness. As her eyes open and close in tandem, she can just about make out a few mournful skyscrapers adorned with weather-worn national flags. These give way to makeshift liming spots where a few hipsters sit on boxes and drink wine while a DJ spins records. In the distance, the phallic-looking House of Parliament looms. Soon, Celeste loses consciousness. There is no need to live in fear. Sheriff Elcock is here. At a rundown apartment, the intro for Fear Crime, a reality TV crime show, comes on. Mrs. King, a mere shadow of her former self, is slumped in an armchair, watching. A half bottle of alcohol sits in one hand. I tell all the children, leave me alone, Fair shit crime. man. Like all your death. This better be important, you know. She staggers from her chair, grabs a nearby shotgun, and walks to the door. She opens the door to see Io holding a barely conscious Celeste. Yeah, this looking important. Elsewhere, Judah awakens from his forced slumber. He finds that his hands and feet are bound, but the wound he sustained earlier is bandaged. As his head begins to clear, he realizes that he is locked in the station's quarantine cell. He struggles to reach the heel of his boot, where a small blade is hidden. Soon he breaks free of his bonds, but the padded walls, reinforced glass, and high ceiling of the cell present new problems. He tries the small blade on the padded cell. The padding shreds. Yeah, you fucker. He begins to work. Years earlier, on the streets of Belmont. We say they Rasta. I say fuck you, I ain't do nothing. A teenage Judah, lean and dreadlocked, stands on the pavement in handcuffs. With him are three other males. Their illegal gambling has been broken up. A police constable pats them down while a sergeant stands over them. Who you think you're talking to? Who you think you're talking to? He grabs young Judah by the back of his pants and pushes him against a nearby wall. Blood spews from Judah's face as he hits the bricks. I could out here like right now and nobody ain't go care no. Just another dead nigger. Check this, Sarge. The constable finds a pistol on one of Judah's alleged accomplices. That yours or Rasta? How you go be mine? You find it on me? We don't want to say nothing, no. It's all over, you go get charged. Horse, I don't even know them. A tinted SUV pulls up to the scene, and a posh gentleman, Mr. Khan, looks out. He is concerned, but calm. Officer, is there any reason you're manhandling one of my employees? He's one of yours, Mr. Khan. Sorry, sorry, I, I really didn't know. That's all right, officer. I was trying to tell him I ain't doing nothing, Mr. Khan. Maybe if you did show some respect, you wouldn't end up so. Let him go, let him go. Inside Mr. Khan's car, Judah is wiping blood from his face as his boss drives. I'm so tired of this shit, and police and them always harassing me. They ain't have nothing to do. You blaming them? Why don't you take a look at yourself? What's the image you're projecting? Your pants down by your bottom, you have a ongo bongo on your head. What really going on with you? You should seriously consider cleaning yourself up. That might help. Later at his apartment, Judah stands over the bathroom sink and examines his face wound in the mirror. Alina, Judah's girlfriend, stands at the doorway with their six-month-old son. Gabriel Judah, if you think you're going to end up in jail and leave me with this child of mine, you liar. I don't know when you're going to get serious. Wapi and grocery work is a big plan to mind me and your son. You fucking imps. Your mother, dad, and gone, and she and all thought you was a imps. Don't talk about my mother. Make me stop now. And your name, ma'am? He starts to say something, but changes his mind. Whatever it is. Thought so. 
should have listened to Sasha and leave you long time. Judah opens the cabinet door and grabs a pair of scissors. He holds them tightly and stares hard at himself. Jaws grinding. He begins to cut his locks. Years later, at an abandoned warehouse. You alright? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. What you do wrong? I, I hesitate. Mm-hmm. You gotta understand. It's war you're fighting. And them animal and them? That's your enemy. Next time. Let's pull the fucking trigger. He tosses the lighter to Judah. Judah catches. At the station, Judah has removed enough of the padding to expose a significant portion of the thin metal door underneath. He takes a step back and then... Fuck. It does not give. Suddenly he remembers something. He checks his pocket. <laughs> Fucker. Judah begins to gather some of the padding and sets it ablaze. At Mrs. King's apartment, Celeste is resting on the couch with fresh bandages on. A frazzled Mrs. King speaks to a worried Ayo. I hope you're going back to feed him at least. Yeah, that and I was going to try to talk some sense into him. Good luck with that. And the commissioner. He's not going to listen either. Well, um, I was hoping you would help with that. <laughs> You think he's gonna listen to me? This is different from last time. No! This time, we have someone who could actually be immune. No! We need to do this. With or without sanction, it is our moral responsibility. Moral responsibility? Yeah, fine, we do enough already. Sometimes the system needs a push, right? A push and go fix anything. You should know that by now. All I know is that she is the cure. You know that? Just like last time, ain't? Wake up now, you. This is Hollywood. We're not gonna save the world. We can't bring back your son, and we can't bring back my... It's just not gonna work, all right? Ayo tries to console her. Mrs. King pulls away. Don't touch me. I am alright with drinking myself to death. You, on the other hand, still obsessed. I'm not obsessed. I just want things to be better. Everybody wants that, but it's not going to happen. For your sake, go and talk to your partner. Work out something. Send her back where she come from and live your life in peace. Peace? That's what you call this? Gosh, girl. Take what I'm telling you. You don't want to become embroiled. Be tolerated. What the ass I see in here? Ayo's attention is diverted by what is on the television. A grainy muted clip of the confrontation between herself, Celeste, and Judah. Sheriff Elcock is talking as the clip runs. Ladies and gentlemen, watch Bacchanal here this evening. Has Nuff infiltrated the service? Mr. Commissioner? Madam Prime Minister? Anybody? What rally going on here? Well, clearly, I'm already embroiled. Meanwhile, back at the station, the fire suppression system has been activated by Judah's fire, and as a result, the door unlocks. Judah kicks it all the way open, and enters the charge room in a huff. As he does, the CB radio on his desk cackles to life. What do you ask going on over there, Judah? Answer! Fuck! <laughs> 